Features are spatial representations. That means partly they exist in space and partly they have spatial content. So the Arnolfini portrait, for instance, shows a man and a woman in a room, it shows their layout, distribution in the room, the layout of the room, various other spatial features. Pictures not only can represent space, they must represent space. That's a feature of all of them, I think. But what about time? Pictures can represent time. The Arnolfini portrait's an example. Arnolfini is raising his hand in greeting to a man who's entering the room, visible in the mirror behind him. So that's a moment of time. As the man enters, Arnolfini greets him. But what about other pictures? Some of the other portraits in this room just show half figures, and there's no particular moment apparently involved in the depiction of them. And even if we want to say that they do involve the depiction of a moment, what about pictures of timeless things? Think of geometrical illustrations or some abstract paintings, Kandinsky's, plays, the like. My view is that pictures not only can, but must represent time, and that's what I'm going to argue for. So let's first start by thinking a bit about different aspects of time, different temporal properties that a picture might represent. We only need two for our purposes, I think. One is duration, the length of time, and the other is order, the order in which things occur. And let's just concentrate on order. So we have an example of simultaneity in the Arnolfini portrait. The man raises his hand as his visitor enters the room at the same time. Other paintings represent events as happening at different times. Elsewhere in the gallery, we have a portrait by Botticelli of the Saint Zenobius. He's shown performing three miracles in a single panel that depicts a continuous space. So Zenobius appeals over here, banishing the demons from the boys in the middle, raising the dead over here, curing the blind. He appears three times in the same picture, and we're to know, we know that we shouldn't read it as saying he can exist in three places at once. It's obvious we're to interpret it another way. These three events happen at different times. So although we're not given the order of them, we are given a difference in temporal sequence. Now, I want to argue that every picture has to represent some events as happening at the same time as each other, or more accurately, that every picture represents some properties as instantiated by an object at one and the same time. So the thesis I want to defend, which I'll call temporality, is this. For every picture, there's an object it represents and properties that are described to that object such that they are ascribed to that object either at different times or at one and the same time. So let's think about how we might defend this thesis. Let's think firstly about different kinds of properties. The properties we need to concentrate on in order to defend the temporality thesis are what I'll call temporal inconsistence. These are properties that cannot be possessed by a single object at a single time where the element of time is important. So there may be some properties that objects can't possess at one time because they can't possess them independently of time. Think, for instance, about belonging to fundamental ontological categories, like being a universal or a particular, or perhaps properties of essential origin, like my being born of my parents. These are the kind of properties that are incompatible metaphysically with other properties, but the problem isn't to do with time, it's just to do with if you come from one set of parents, you can't come from another set, and although it's a stranger example, if you're a universal, at no time could you have been a particular. So let's call these things temporal inconsistence. They're properties that can't be possessed as a matter of necessity at a single time where time is the obstacle. And in fact, there are many, many such properties. Basically, every property with respect to which an object can change will belong to a sequence of properties which form temporal inconsistence. So Arnolfini's coat may be black at a given time, and it may once have been white, maybe it's been dyed, but it can't be black and white simultaneously. The shape of his head could be such and such at one time, and it might be such and such at a different time, maybe he has a horrible accident or gets his hair cut, but they can't be those two shapes at one and the same time. And if we concentrate on these temporal inconsistence, I think it's possible to argue for the temporality thesis. So here's the argument. Take an object and two properties which are temporal inconsistence, so it can't have both of them at one and the same time. Suppose that pictures don't have to represent time. 
So it's possible for there to be a picture with no temporal content at all. If that were so, there should be three options when it comes to depicting this object and these two properties. Let's call the object O and the properties F and G. Firstly, the picture could represent O as F at one time and G at another. Secondly, it could represent O as F and G at one and the same time. And thirdly, and this is the possibility that interests us, it could represent the object as F and represent the object as G, but there'd be no time at which it represented it as either of those properties, so it would have no temporal content. Now, the first option is one that's occupied by real pictures. If we go back to Botticelli's image of Zenobius performing three miracles, that's exactly what we have. Zenobius is over here, and now over here and over here, but he's there at different times. So we have temporal inconsistent properties ascribed by the picture to one and the same object, Zenobius, but ascribed as possessed by him at different times. The second option is also occupied. Now remember, this option is O is represented as both F and G and as being F and G at one and the same time. But since F and G are temporal inconsistence and nothing can be F and G at the one and the same time, this picture must represent O as being a way it could not possibly be. It's a picture of an impossible object. But there are such pictures. Just think of Escher's endlessly ascending and descending staircases. So this stair is represented as below this one, but simultaneously as above it, because the staircase just loops around forever. But are there any pictures that fit the third option? Are there any pictures which represent temporally consistent properties, but don't depict either those properties as possessed at different times, or by depicting them as possessed at the same time, depicting possibilities? And this is the core of the argument. I put it to you, the answer is simply no. So the, that doesn't yet give us the claim, but we're very close to it. Why would this be? Here's the answer. My temporality thesis is true. That says, remember, every picture represents objects, and if it ascribes two properties to that object, then it either ascribes those properties as possessed at one and the same time by the object, or as possessed at different times by the object. There are our first two options. There's no room for the third. So in essence, that's the argument. Now let me finish just by saying a couple of things that might, as it were, chase hairs or stop you having any ways of trying to escape from my inexorable logic. So firstly, are there other explanations we can give of the absence of the third option? Other ways of explaining why you get Zenobius-type pictures, Escher-type pictures, but no third option? The best way to try and do that, I think, would be to appeal to an idea about how pictures work. It's a very common thought that pictures work by resembling what they represent. And that means, essentially, that if they represent something as having a certain property, they do so by having that property itself. So, for example, Arnolfini's wife gown is represented as green by the picture itself being green, and similarly for the other colours in the picture. And although it's a little harder to run this argument for shape properties, we can get the thing going. If you want to represent something cubic, you better at least use something squarish. And if you want to represent something spherical, you better use something roundish. So then we could try explaining the absence of the third option in the following way. For a picture to represent our two temporal inconsistents, F and G, it would itself have to be F and G. But nothing can be F and G at one and the same time. So either the picture would have to be F and G at different times, or this would do just as well, F in one place and G in another place, or it couldn't exist. And if it couldn't exist, it couldn't depict what we're looking for. And that's all well and good, but as the acute listener will have noticed, the problem with this argument, this explanation, is it doesn't only explain why we don't have the third kind of picture, the one that ascribes temporal inconsistence without ascribing them at any time, it simultaneously explains something which is not true, which is why we don't have the second kind of picture. It makes it impossible, in other words, for there to be pictures of impossible objects. So that's no good. And since that's no good, and since it's the only explanation that between us we've thought of as an alternative to mine, we should adopt my explanation. Last thought of all. If it's true that pictures have to represent properties as possessed either simultaneously or at different times, then what of some of the examples I began with? Examples of illustrations of geometrical shapes or 
Rothko's, just vague forms in space, where you might think these things are timeless, and so it would be crazy to insist a moment is represented, let alone a series of moments, Zenobia's style. But here I think we need to see that you can have pictorial content, and then, as it were, you can throw some of it away because it's not very interesting. And that's what I suggest is going on in these cases. A picture of an isosceles triangle, if there really are pictures of such things, I have my doubts, but we can set that aside. But a picture of an isosceles triangle would represent the lines as arranged just this way at a given moment. It's just that we know not to take that aspect of its content at all seriously in thinking about the object in the picture and what we can learn from it. Thank you.